Broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. It is 45 minutes after the hour, and I am your host, Kat Hobson, here on Paranormal Experience Radio. I am joined tonight by Pam Berry, who I'm so excited to be speaking with. She lives in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. She owns the Gettysburg Ghost Exchange and Hallowed Grounds Tours. She is, with her husband, hosting one of the best events in the paranormal field today, and that is the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. Everything goes to support the Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors, and I'm going to tell you that she has got a lot going on, and Steve is brilliant too, and hopefully, you know, if we don't hear from him here in a little bit, we'll get him back on again too, because his experiences are fantastic. He is someone that I respect a lot. So, that being said, welcome back, Pam. Hey, I'm back. Yay. Well, <laughs> you know, we have been talking so much just about the city of Gettysburg and the things around there. You said that you have a lovely barn on your property. We and do. That you get uh, a lot of activity back there. Who is back there? Um, we've gotten a lot of soldiers. Uh, there's somebody that was a vagrant that lived um, in or around the barn. Um, we were at, not last year, because last year for National Ghost Hunting Day, we were actually, we had a paranormal cruise. But right. the year before, we uh, featured the barn on National Ghost Hunting Day. We we uh, had some dark shadows back there, lots of EVP. Um, what else did we get, Steve, for National Ghost Hunting Day? Hey, yeah, lots of dark shadows, and they just kind of run back and forth. Um, it's like somebody's working, still working. I think there's a lot of residual back there. Mm-hmm. And we've got two vultures that live uh, four. Uh, our two vultures um, had babies, so um, there's four vultures that live upstairs <laughs> under the eaves. <laughs> um, those are so huge. Well, I they guess that keeps down they... on your rodent population in your barn, though. That's a good thing. That's true. They're brilliant yeah, for that. Well, when you had the experiences back there, especially for National Ghost Hunting Day, which I think is just amazing that you did that. But I think the cruise was a great idea, too. The experiences that you're describing with the shadows that are still working and, you know, they're kind of like going back and forth and doing their chores and stuff. We get that a lot here at Sloss, too. And but you get a lot of EVP and communications. Do the shadows that you experience in there communicate with you as well? It did not. They were kind of in a hurry. So I think it was more like that was residual. It was just back and forth, up and down, back and forth, like somebody was doing their chores. Right. I just am always fascinated, especially when you have locations that are known haunts, right, where where it's documented, there is stuff happening, like, you right, know, yeah. like your entire area, <laughs> right? But I it think is. it's fun when you get a chance to talk with someone and maybe compare you know, I'm not from around here originally, though. I know, right? I'm blessed to have to that my journey has taken me here. Um, I'm from Maryland. I uh, I'll tell you how I got here to to, to Gettysburg. I was um, a single mom, and I really believe in manifesting your future. Right. So uh, my dream. I used to bring my kids here quite often. Um, you know, the area that I lived in wasn't great, and um, this was our, that was our getaway coming to Gettysburg for even if just a day and we would go home because I couldn't really afford to stay in a hotel uh, too many times with the kids. So um, the very last time I was in Gettysburg, I was at the Lincoln Diner and I, w- I just started crying and I said, I have to move here. I can't I can't leave anymore. I have to become a resident because I was mourning the vibration and the energy here. So I decided that I had gotten my income tax. So I had enough money and I gave my landlady 
a month rent and a month security deposit, and I had one more month rent in the bank. And I said, universe, help me make it. You know, my kids went to a good school up here. Um, I just had to become, I didn't want my kids to become a statistic. I wanted them to become curious over our situation. So um, I just had faith that I could find work, and I did. I worked at a lot of local nursing homes and hospitals. And then my mom was one of my last residents, and we opened up the Gettysburg Ghost Exchange. Just amazing and wonderful. And and my residents have come to the store to visit me, too. How neat. My live residents, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even if they don't believe in what I do, they support me. And um, that's what's really great about, our, about Gettysburg. Even though I'm a transplant, you know, they, they love me as though I was, I was here forever. You know, I've taken care of a lot of people's moms and dads and grandparents. Um, I was blessed in that situation. But um, I don't know. I love walking up the street and people will holler, hey, ghost exchange or hey, berries. You know, I, we're one of the community here. And, and I'm just so proud to be a part of, of our community. I love them and they love us. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Ah. There's so many amazing shops in town that I will to because we're right off of 15 and people will come to our store and say, where should I go? So then I hand out my friend's cards and say, hey, don't miss this person. This is this, is this and this is a great place to eat and get the full Gettysburg experience, you know. Get in the orphanage. Don't miss the orphanage. Just awesome. I love that you do yeah. that. And you know, it's it just really is, or it sounds like, I can't wait to experience, but it sounds like such a great community period. With, it I mean, truly is. You know, to accept you as you came in, and that doesn't happen everywhere. Of course, your energy is no, just amazing, really, too, so that helps. Yeah, I mean, you have to, you can't be afraid to be vulnerable, and I learned that in this journey. You know, being vulnerable and showing people that you care and that you love them um, is very gratifying. And it, it just shows, you know, before I hang up the phone, I always tell my friends and my children, I love you because you never know. You don't. I've learned that, too. He's That's a big deal. laughing at me, but he knows that. And I'm like, I always say that. If that's my final word to you or if that's the final word that you said to me, I love you, too, it's, I'm good with that. Well, better than not. Yeah. Seriously. Oh. So, do, you hear, do you hear my puppy? That's Chucky Berry. Do. I do hear him. <laughs> He'll be at the bash. Well, so far, mine are being relatively well behaved. <laughs> Yours just sounds so him. cute. I love the pictures, too. <laughs> So I had actually thought about bringing one of mine who's new and still has really major separation anxiety. And I thought, well, she might freak out with the crowds because she's young. But and I I'm know just, it'll be crowded. I'm going to bring I'm going to bring his little kennel, and he'll have time downstairs. And then when he needs to go up and take a nap, I'll take him to our room and put him in his kennel. Right. Well, I just think that I think that it's awesome when people want to be with their animals like that. It just is a different thing. So I am, I want to talk to you about L Lilydale also, because when I realized that that's where you had trained, I was so interested because I, I've never been there, but I have other friends who have trained there as well. And Love it. It's beautiful and it's bizarre in a fantastic way. Tom, Tom Crassley is the best teacher ever. He is life changing. He's um he's just so knowledgeable and um I just you have to meet Tom Crassley, anyone who goes to Lilydale. Um it's a town of psychics and healers. Um I received my healing mastery there from Tom 
Um, I took Steve there last year for the first time. He got to walk in the ground. There, there's something special about everything that I've experienced in Lilydale, whether it's a lavender cookie and I'm meeting somebody at Cup of Joe's um, to the stump where you can get three different, uh, three times a day. They have readings from the psychic free of charge. Um, there's always education. Some of it's free. Some of it's paid. Uh, there's um, bed and breakfast on, on the grounds. There's two restaurants. There's amazing little shops. There's Patricia Price. There's just amazing people that, um, that there's two temples. There's the forest temple. Then there's the, uh, the other temple that I learned in. There's healings two to three times a day in the temples. Uh, it's just, I can't say enough. Uh, I, can, I feel connected to universe the entire time I'm there. And then I let the world get in my way. And that's my next um, learning curve to stay connected to the universe, even off the ground. That's not as easy as one would think. A, a friend uh-huh. who is one of the most positive people I know posted that she was having issues with not letting the world in her boat kind of. And I was like, you know, everybody has that issue because it's, you can't always stay on the mountaintops, but you can't always stay down in the valleys either. If you can find a plateau where you can experience and my aunt actually told me that when I was a teenager because, you know, life. And it was it was the best advice. It really was powerful. It, it, it's true. Learn to dance in the puddles, you know. Mm-hmm. It's got to rain sometimes. Just go with it. Well, it does. And you can't let it drown you. Yeah, you have to exactly. you have to know how to keep yourself up. And that's, I would think that's one of the things that, that you've learned very well while you were there, because that is part of the universal teachings, right? Uh, absolutely. The it's balance. a big part of spiritualism. Absolutely. Do you, do you see yourself offering these classes of, obviously not the same as Lily Dale, but your own, to help other people develop their skills with that? We do. Um, we um, offer some teachings, um, Reiki 1, 2, 3, all the way up to mastery level. Um, my, cla- my healing level 2 will be coming up shortly. Um, I did put an application in to become a teacher in Lilydale in 2019. So everyone gives some positive vibrations to Absolutely. that. that my would be class fantastic. is going it's going to be talking with spirit with and without equipment because I'll, probably about four years ago, TAPS actually went to Lilydale. They were welcome there. So I thought, I want to go as I investigate. When I investigate, I step in as that Reiki master spiritual healer because I believe that spaces, places, and souls at times need to be healed. So I want to go into Lilydale with my paranormal investigator hat on this time and kind of talk about spirit communication with and without equipment. So fingers crossed. I hope that works out. But you know what? We're at our top of the hour break. So this will be five and we will be back on the flip side. All righty. 